Welcome to Jazz Time. Jazz Time is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos where customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online, click the link in the description below to buy it at jazztime.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Gerard Perigo Loretto 38mm Green Ceramic Aston Martin Edition. I'm going to talk to you about the bezel, the dial, the case, the bracelet, the movement, give you a little bit of history and my thoughts, and then try it on. So let's start. This is the Gerard Perigo Loretto. Now, the Loretto has many different versions. They make it in rose gold, in steel, with leather, all sorts of different combinations, even for women. And it's Gerard Perigo's most coveted line. Each brand has that line that is their most coveted. For example, the Patek Philippe has the Nautilus, the Audemars Piguet has the Royal Oak, and Rolex has the Daytona. For Gerard Perigo, it's the Loretto, and it is the most coveted and desired desirable line for them. And as a result, some of these watches are even selling at or above retail because, well, we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's start with the first thing and let's just say that this watch is made out of a green ceramic. Now, why would you want a watch that is made of green ceramic or even ceramic at all? Most watches are made out of stainless steel or titanium or out of precious metals such as white gold, rose gold, yellow gold, gold. Some brands, but not a lot, but some as much as Audemars Piguet and Hublot and Gerard Perigo make their luxury watches out of ceramic. Now, the benefit of ceramic is first, it is very scratch resistant. Now, of course, you can still scratch it, but it is much more resistant and it's actually seven times stronger than steel. So steel is already very much more scratch resistant than gold, but ceramic is even more so. In fact, it is seven times more. So for all intents and purposes, you probably sh will not scratch this watch. In fact, watchmakers such as Rolex use ceramic only on their bezels. Now, why would they do that? Because the bezel is the place that the watch scratches the most often. By putting ceramic on the bezel, it doesn't scratch so much there. It is also resistant to UV rays, so it doesn't fade over time. It's a great material for that reason. Now, one of the drawbacks of ceramic is that even though it is very hard, it is not malleable in any way. So, for example, on steel, if you hit it, you could dent it, which means it's malleable. But ceramic is not, so if you hit it, most of the time, it's not going to break. But if you hit it hard enough, since it's not malleable, it will not deform. It'll just simply crack. So, the downside is that hitting ceramic hard enough, for example, dropping it on a concrete floor, yeah, you could shatter the ceramic, which would actually destroy the watch. But for most people who aren't taking it and slamming their wrist down against the floor playing hockey with their watch, their very expensive watch, that's probably not going to be an issue. Scratches would be, and that's why ceramic would help you not scratch your watch, right? Now, it is also green. They don't make very many green watches. In fact, this is the only Loretto that is made in green. In fact, of all the watchmakers, Hublot and AP, I cannot think of a watch in any other major brand that have made all green ceramic. Now, AP has done some of their watches with green ceramic accents, such as the AP Concept or the AP Offshore. They made it with green accents, but not the entire watch in green. Now, this watch, the reason it's made in green is because it's a collaboration between the Swiss mason, Gerard Perigo, and the British marquee car maker, Aston Martin. So they've come together to make this fantastic green watch, and that's the result of what you see here. So this watch is made, let's talk about the case a little bit now. It is a 38 millimeters case. That is the longest distance across the bezel from the 8 o'clock to the 2 o'clock position. They also make this watch in 42 millimeters. I would suggest the 38 watch would be those who have a 7 inch wrist or smaller. And that does usually equate to somebody who is around 160 pounds or smaller. If you have a 7 inch wrist or smaller, you should probably wear the 38. If you have a 7 inch wrist or larger, I would definitely recommend the 42. So, yeah. Now, what else can I say about the case is that you'll notice that the bezel is octagonal. 
Now, it probably reminds you very much of the Ottawa's Piguet Royal Oak or the Patek Philippe Nautilus, and the reason is that because it's not designed by the same designer, which would be Gerald Genta, but it was designed at the same time, and the Ottomar's Piguet is the first one on the market. They came out in 1972 by Gerald Genta, and then the Gerard Perigo came out with the Loretto, which is what you see here, as the earlier version in 1975. And then Patek Philippe Nautilus came out in 1976. So the Patek actually came out one year after GP, the Gerard Perigo, interestingly enough. But since they were all designed around the same time, they all look very similar. They have this wide case at the top, and they have this octagonal style bezel, right? And you'll notice that the top side of the bezel is, it has a satin finish. And then under that, which it's what it sits on, has a high polish. And then the case itself again has a satin finish. And then on the edge, the beveled edge, you'll notice it has a high polish. Now, you'll see it, it's basically altering each time it goes downward. And the reason being is that it'll allow the watch to have a very interesting and beautiful play on light. Or play with light, I guess. Now, as a side note, the name Loretto came about because Gerard Perigo's Italian distributor decided that the watch should be named after the 1967 film The Graduate, or in Italian, Loretto. So they named it after that. Okay, now that's really the case. Let's talk about... Okay, I guess I should. Let's turn it on its side. Let's see the side profile here. Now, it's what's very nice about this, it has a thickness of only 10 millimeters. To give you an idea about that, 8 millimeters would be considered very thin, very, very thin, actually. Uh, 12 millimeters would be considered normal, 13, 14 would be thick, 15 and above is just super thick. And so 10 is considered thin, but not ultra thin. And that's nice because it can fit under your suit cuff or under your sleeve, and it's not cumbersome at all. Okay, now that is the case, let's talk about the dial. Now the dial is a sunray gray with cross hatching. Now it has a sunray. Sunray means that if you move it in different rays of light, it'll shine differently. So it'll look lighter and darker even though it's not lighter and darker. If they've done it this way because they've done it with a sunray finish. It makes it appear that way. Now it does also have this cross hatching. Now as I believe this was a sort of meant to be like the grill of the car like the grill, the front grill of the car, which is pretty cool, actually. Now, on some of their other Loretto's, they don't do this cross-hatching design. They either skeletonize it in some of the ones, or they do some sort of hobnail thing in their earlier versions. So, I mean, they really got a lot of cool different dials on the Loretto. This is, of course, one of them. But yes, I do believe that cross-hatching is supposed to represent the sort of front grille of the Aston Martin, and it is very beautiful. I like it! And what else you could notice here is that the hands are luminescent, so that means if you shine a light on it, on the hands, you can easily read it at night, which is a very nice feature. But they don't put the loom all the way down, so they kind of skeletonize the hour and the minute hands so that the center still remains black. It's very nicely done. The watch is time and date only, which makes it very simple. But simple is not a bad thing. The watch is already loud as it is. I don't think there's much need to add a bunch of complications to it. Okay, and alright, now let's move on to the bracelet. Now, you might also notice that the bracelet looked kind of similar to other watches, such as the Royal Oak from AP or the Nautilus from Patek, and how so? Well, if you look at the way the bracelet integrates into the case of the watch, pretty much only the Nautilus and the Audemars Piguet and I guess also the Vacheron Overseas, let's not forget about them, which came out in 1996, I think, somewhere around there. They came out with that much later than everybody else, but they have a very similar high polish center links with other surrounding links being satin finish. And then if you look down the edge of the bracelet, it has this beveled edge high polish that continues down the side of the case and that gives the watch this continuous look. It looks like it was designed by a continuous one person as opposed to just taking a strap and throwing it onto the watch. It looks like it was built for this watch, which is a very nice thing. So you have this high polish followed by a satin finish. 
And one of the benefits, as I said earlier, to having that watch made of ceramic is that these high polished center links will always stay high polished. What can actually happen, I've seen this happen because I've had these watches and sold them, is that after you have these high polish on the center links, after some time you they, they get scratched up and they end up looking like they have a brushed finish and then it doesn't look that nice anymore. Well, of course you'll still... Well, of course you could still polish it, but it still doesn't look very nice. But now on this green ceramic, it's going to stay this high polish forever. You don't have to worry about a desk dive or getting it scratched. You just have to worry about dropping it, catastrophic loss, but you don't have to worry about everyday issues. I guess you'd have to worry about the catastrophic loss on any watch, actually, but if you dropped a steel watch, I'm pretty sure it'd get pretty messed up too. Maybe not, you know, snapped in half, but it definitely would not be great if you dropped it on concrete. Anyways, that's the bracelet. The buckle, of course, is quite nice too. Not much to say about it, I just like that it's a deploy, you simply click it open and that's what it looks like. Now let's move on to the movement. I guess I should also say that the ceramic GP makes is that it's also unaffected by ambient temperature. It's light, it's hypoallergenic by the way, and it's very smooth. All right, let's move on and talk about the movement. Now, the movement, of course, is an excellent movement. Now, Gerard Perigo are known for making in-house movements that are done to perfection. And their caliber on this is a GP3300, and it has many different kind of finishes. In fact, it has five different finishes. The plate and bridges are meticulously stretched, beveled, and engraved with circular grained and adorned Cotes de Geneva finishing on it. They have blue screws and gilded engravers are revealed throughout the sapphire crystal back. Now, what else you can notice about this movement, or about the case back, is that it has a signature Aston Martin on it. You also see the logo of the Aston Martin on the very back, so you know that it has been some kind of collaboration done there with it, and it makes the watch just that little bit more special. Now, a lot of watch brands have done collaborations with other brands. For example, AP has done it with Marvel Comics. Uh, who else? Uh, Richard Mill, it does a lot, almost on all of their pieces. Uh, they do some kind of collaboration with some kind of athlete or artist or something. I mean, AP has done tons of collaborations with a lot of big brands and these big collaborations, and I think it's a great thing. It gives the watch some kind of meaning other than saying, hey, look, it's my green watch. Now, it's a green watch that has something to do with Aston Martin. And it gives the watch a bit of meaning, a bit of depth, something cool. All right, and so that's pretty much all the parts. Now, let me try it on. Now, I am six feet tall, 200 pounds, and I have a 7.5 inch wrist. And I'm going to try it on, and you can see it fits on me without any issue. But I could say that if it were me and I was wearing it with a 7.5 inch wrist, I would have to say that the 42 millimeter would fit better. But let's just imagine my wrist is about an inch smaller, which in this case, I would be perfect for the 38 millimeter. And it is a fantastic watch. It really is. If you want a watch that is not a Royal Oak or a Nautilus or something that somebody would recognize or a Vacheron Overseas, then the Girard Perigo Loretto is the way to go. Now, why? One, because it still gives that beautiful Art Deco look. And it has some amazing craftsmanship. And it has such a cool color and, well, it looks beautiful. It doesn't have that same price tag. Now, this watch retails for $25,000. And we're selling it right now for twenty-five dollars or twenty-seven, dollars something like that, right around that at jazztime.com. If you click the link in the description below, you can buy it. So this is a great buy because you don't have to pay over retail. All of those other ones, any Nautilus, you're going to be paying double retail. Any Royal Oak, you're going to be paying 50% over retail. And it also was designed back in 1975, 50 years ago. It also looks cool and maybe even cooler because it is more unique. So you can have a very unique watch with a very similar design, and it's not like we're copying each other. I mean, in fact, they did come out even before Nautilus. 
So this design has been out for a very long time. GP Gerard Perigo has been doing this for almost 50 years, even longer than the Nautilus. But it doesn't have the Nautilus price tag. GP is not that big of a company as Patek or AP. But it is still a great watch, especially for the price. And I think you really can't go wrong. So if you like it and if you would like to buy it, click the link in the description below to buy it at Jazz Time. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazztime plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.